So it's basically almost January and um, my birthday is coming up and I'm a Capricorn. But does that actually make any sense? Like what is a Capricorn? What's, what's Zodiac? So let's maybe talk about this. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video I actually wanted to explore the idea of Zodiac and um, kind of show you where some of these stars are located starting with my own constellation um, Capricorn. But I also wanted to give you an idea of what the actual stars look like from outside of our solar system and where uh, most of them are actually located. We're going to use Space Engine for this and in a recent update you actually have Zodiac and you have constellations. But we're not really going to talk about the uh, metaphysical meanings behind the Zodiac other than the fact that what a constellation is or what it represents is the location of our sun across the night sky. So for example, right now I believe I am recording this on December, December 7th of 2018. Um, December is, what is it like? It was Scorpio, now it's turning into Sagittarius. And so if I actually enable the Zodiac map, you'll see that, well, there is the Scorpius, and the sun is slowly headed uh, towards Sagittarius and after this is going to go into my uh, constellation of Capricornus, which is the Capricorn. Now if you look around the night sky and if you try to essentially see all of the constellations, you'll realize that there's actually quite a lot. There's a tremendous number of them, only 12 of them are in our uh, zodiac, but um, there's a lot of stuff out there. And although it doesn't really make uh, any sense scientifically to even consider zodiac, or constellations that is, uh, scientists today do use constellations for one simple reason. It's a very easy way of mapping stars in the night sky. So for example, let's say I found a star that's really awesome, really cool and really new and nobody has found it before and it's somewhere right here in the um, Orsa Major. Like, let's just click on this star right here to see what it is. And as you can see, um, its name is actually Orsa Majoris. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think it says 44 Orsa Majoris, 44th star discovered in the Orsa Major constellation. So because of these very clearly defined borders that we have for every constellation, it makes it very easy for scientists to name things. And so it does save a lot of time. Although today we usually name things based on the either telescope or a mission that discovered those particular stars. Like for example, Many stars discovered by Kepler telescope will actually have Kepler in the name. And that's because, well, the reason is really simple. All of the Kepler stars are in the same constellation. They're all pointing in the same direction. So if you found like thousands and thousands of stars with planets and all of them are named after essentially the same constellation, that's going to be very difficult. So instead we name them after the telescope itself, Kepler. So many planets found by Kepler are just called Kepler number, like for example, Kepler 42. Uh, so anyway, we're talking about Zodiac. So um, first of all, let's park ourselves right here, right in front of our planet Earth. Let's take a look at my constellation, which is this right here, Capricornus. And as you see, um, well, first of all, it's supposed to be some sort of a goat, specifically a water goat. Um, I believe not really this kind, more of this kind. So it's essentially a mixture of a goat and a fish. Now, um, in many cultures actually do uh, consider this particular constellation to, for some reason, be a water goat and uh, not just the Western culture, actually. But if you just look at the constellation itself, um, it's sort of open to interpretation. Um, as a matter of fact, if you try to see what stars are responsible for the formation of the uh, constellation here, most of them um, are not actually even the brightest stars. And um, the most interesting star here is called Deneb. And uh, this star is very, very bright. It's only about 40 light years away from um, our planet. And it's actually um, one of the more well-known and well-studied stars as well. But some of the farther stars here are not really that well-known. And um, what's really interesting is that this particular star, which is Alpha Capricornii, has two parts and both parts are in completely different locations in our galaxy. One is more far away, way, way more far away than the other one. Uh, the first star here, it says that is at a distance of about 108 light years. 
but the secondary part of this uh, object is about 690 light years away. So they're kind of basically just in the same line uh, from us. So anyway, let's uh, actually zoom closer and closer to this system and just to kind of see what all of this looks like as you try to fly toward Capricornus. Now we're going to make sure that we're pointing at uh, Deneb, which is the closest and the brightest in the system. But we're also going to essentially take a look at how the um, shape of the actual constellation transforms as we uh, fly through it. So notice how right now it does kind of look like, I guess, a goat shape. But as you fly through the system, you'll start noticing how it starts stretching. There's Deneb, there's the second closest star. And at some point, it no longer looks like anything that you can actually recognize. And some of these stars are so far away that um, it really makes you realize that constellations, um, or zodiac in a sense, is really just uh, a collection of two-dimensional images of a very, very vast three-dimensional space. And this is exactly what you see here. So no longer do we see a goat. We see a very highly stretched shape that doesn't really have a name, to be honest. Um, the farthest star here, the most far away star, I think is going to be either one of these. I, I don't remember which one it is, to be honest, but I think it's actually going to be this right here. And this star is the object known as 5 Capricornii, um, also known as Alpha 1 Capricornii. So this is at a distance of about 700 light years away from our planet Earth. So the stars in this particular constellation are at ridiculous distances, uh, anywhere from 40 to 700 light years. So it would be very difficult for us to actually um, try to find them from outside of our solar system. But if you were to look back onto our planet Earth and to kind of see what all of these constellations look like from the outside, this is what it is. All of those lines and shapes are now transformed into this very unusual star-like object. And as you can see, some of these stars that we actually do consider to be part of the constellation are really far away. Uh, some of the farthest stars are actually about 9,000 light years away from our planet. And I think you're going to see it in a few seconds as I move out of here. And what is interesting is that um, some stars are very close, some are really, really far. And the farthest object is right there on the bottom. This is in the Scorpius um, system, basically part of the Scorpio constellation. And as you can see, it is super far. So this is, I think, around 9,000 light years away from planet Earth. Now let's actually zoom out a little bit more and take a look at the galactic plane just to see how large of a structure all of this forms in comparison to, well, our galaxy. So there is the Milky Way with its center and um, I'm currently pointing at that uh, Scorpio star that we just had in our view. And as I zoom closer and closer here, you'll start noticing the shapes reappear. And so this is how dramatically uh, stretched all of the zodiac is. So you can kind of see some stars are really far, some stars are obviously much, much closer. But overall, it does form a very large part of um, the Milky Way. Although compared to the actual size of the galaxy, this is actually practically nothing. This is just a blob, just a tiny spot um, in our galaxy. So let's actually come a little bit closer and maybe even uh, come closer to Earth just to take a look at some of the other stars in the Zodiac. And our planet Earth is actually right there in the middle of all of this. And as we fly closer and closer to it, you will start seeing the shapes kind of rearrange again and become more familiar because the Zodiac um, constellations will actually return to their original shapes as we come closer to Earth. Now, as we fly closer to Earth, though, you can kind of see how there's so many stars out there. There's actually so many more stars we could have used for the Zodiac some of them actually much brighter than the ones are, that are already used. And as a matter of fact, I actually have to stop for a second because it's getting a little bit out of control and reduce the brightness of some of the stars here. Okay, so let's return back to Earth for a second and you can see the uh, Zodiac just reshapes and became familiar again. And so now that we're actually back with all of the familiar shapes of uh, the constellations and the Zodiac, what can we actually tell from this little adventure? Well, first of all, all of these shapes are basically the creation of our human imagination. A long time ago, uh, you know, the early astronomers were looking into the, into the skies and realized that some patterns were resembling things that they knew around themselves. They resembled something that they actually knew in real life. Like, for example, some of these shapes may have resembled goats and some of these shapes may have resembled fish. But 
as you kind of move away from the planet Earth and as you start looking at these shapes and all of these stars responsible for these shapes, you realize that, well, it only works from our exact location of Earth and it only works if you're looking at the exact stars. However, if you move away a little bit and start looking at the sky again, none of this makes sense anymore. And so the Capricornus, for example, does not resemble a goat anymore. It kind of now looks more like a bird, actually. So yeah, constellations are literally just to the images of 3D space. They're projections. They're nothing more than human imagination trying to uh, find meaning in tiny dots in the sky. However, they are very, very useful for modern scientists to actually map things and to make things easier to name. Um, but other than that, there is really no scientific use for the actual constellations. They don't really mean very much anymore. And I know that uh, astrology is actually a very prominent field and many people do believe in it. Um, as a matter of fact, I used to believe in it when I was younger as well. Um, it just doesn't really make sense. As a matter of fact, there are so many signs out there. There's lots of signs out there. Why specifically these 12 signs? Why does it matter where the sun is located in, in the skies for you to actually have a certain personality? I personally don't really think um, it makes sense, but that's just me. I'm not going to say that it's true or not true. I'm just going to show you once again what the zodiac looks like as you fly away from planet Earth. It really turns into this really strange looking star-like object. And so on that note, uh, let's finish this video here. Hopefully you enjoyed this little adventure. And um, you can actually explore this yourself in the Space Engine version 0.990 and take a look at it by clicking on the button on the right here where it says uh, Constellations. It's a very cool addition. I really love it. I love exploring and seeing how the constellations look like from different perspectives. And it was really fun to explore my own zodiac, my own uh, constellation of Cap Capricorn, just to discover where, where those stars actually are located. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this little exploration. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Share this video with someone who wants to learn about space sciences or sciences in general. And maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon. It does help me quite a lot. See you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. And meanwhile, let's actually re-enable all of the stars just so you can see how many stars there are as we're flying away from the planet Earth. And zoom out of here and take a look at this from the outside once again. It's a huge object when you think about it. This is a lot of a lot of stars that we're able to map over thousands of years. But there's a lot more to go.